right now 60 diesel so today rebuild your transit engine um as you'll have seen a bit of time lapse i've popped my new piston in now loads of people did ask me mm, why don't you put four new pistons in um there's no wear on this engine it's done like seventy thousand miles there's no lips there's no damage there's no nothing the only reason that this ear piston gnarled itself was because the injector's rubbish so the ball's good rings are all fine so basically one piston will sort it i mean i could replace all four but it's just another 300 quid 250 quid and a waste of time basically because let's be honest this thing isn't going to do 200,000 miles it'll do another 70 and shit itself again won't it because that's what they do so what we're going to do this morning we've got to clean all the faces the cylinder head is full of googe the inlet manifold is full of googe i mean i love the way that ford don't even bother painting the block let's worry about that won't last long enough really if it goes rusty um so we'll get everything cleaned down and then we'll start putting the big bits back on there is hiding here Oop. full edge of gasket set and a new set of head bolts so basically i reckon my job for the next day on and off is to make this back into a transit engine put the timing chain back on same again i'm not replacing the timing chain it's done seventy thousand miles it's perfect it's not worn out what's the point of replacing parts that aren't knackered um, and then we'll reassemble it, sort the gaskets, throw it back in a transit. <laughs> clean as I can get the face there are a few we'll give it another wipe over in a minute there are a few little gasket lines but they ain't coming off and they aren't raised so I'm assuming that that's just where the steel rings were clean the pistons clean the piston balls do remember when putting these engines back together because they're sunk and bolt into a block and when you've done a lovely cleaning job is to blow all of these bolt holes out because if they've got oil or say coolant or anything in them what you'll get is a false head bolt reading when you pull the bolts down because obviously they're going to hydraulic lock and they'll read is going up tight when they aren't tight so i'm going to put something over the top of this for a minute because i can't do much more to this i'm going to go and steam the death out of this manky cylinder head now try and get all the gack out the valves the same with the manifolds and then we'll just sit the top on it drop the bolts in so that nothing else gets in here cunning plan right so now we've got this all set on there obviously set off el nuvo heady bolt so i'm just going to drop these in here a minute Quite easily decipherable. Some have a big head, some have a little head. Nice, perfect. Now, what I'm going to have to do is get talking on this. I'm going to have to go and find the uh, Z torque specs, run these bolts down, and then we'll work from there. No point to uh, time lapse the talky bit because you all know how it happens. I'll tell you the talk settings. <laughs> cylinder or helmet cylinder head on and talked it up so torque settings for a transit pretty simple you've got 17 mil headed bolts in the middle and 13s around the outside so you've got a row of five and five so 10 in the middle four and four on the outer edges so basically it's a um it's four stages but on four stages on two different sets of bolts so what you, your first stage is so stage one is your big 17s 10 newton meters then your little 13s five newton meters um stage three which is your um your big center bolts up to 20 newton meters stage four is your little 13 mil bolts up to 10 newton meters so stage five big ones 40 newton meters stage six 
you've got the little ones around the outside so they need to be 20 newton meters and then stages seven and stages eight are 180 degrees so basically half a turn so middle work your way out so 180 degrees on the big ones in the middle then 180 degrees on the little ones on the outside as you will see i've just dropped the cams back in on this um I'm going to clean the top cam carrier because it's a bit gooky because Ford seems to stick everything together with no gaskets and silicon. Um, so we'll get that cleaned up. I'm going to start sort of throwing bigger bits like the turbocharger might as well be sat back on. Um, and then we can sort of put the, um, the rockers in once I've cleaned that, that piece out there, cleaned and dried off. <music> To a point, we've seen the cams, cam carrier gone in. Obviously, the cam um, top section of the cam carrier, whatever you want to call it, is um, is siliconed down either side. I've used some grey Mercedes sealant. That'll do a good enough job. Um, then we've got, obviously, the rockers dropped in in the middle. Now, when you do this, you need do need to make sure that when you crank this down, if you haven't timed it up, don't have pistons at top dead centre, just in case you've got valves out on something and you screw this in here make a mess so i just wound him just gingerly off tdc um, i'm pretty sure i got the cams in the right place um but i'll work that out once i put this chain back on we just whipped the turbocharger back on with a new gasket dipstick is in annoying turbo return pipe it's got a new um new gasket in his back on um top feed is in and also you can see i've just chucked the engine mount on so next on is i think we're going to have to attend to a timing chain which means i'm going to have to go and look at some schematic -y, picture -y type stuff and Work out how to do that. Right, onward. Timing chain wise, I'm to get the crank timing mark. I've actually got to put the flywheel back on. So I'm going to leave that for a minute, mainly because obviously with it on an engine stand, you can't get the flywheel on. So the timing chain is actually relatively simple. Thank you, Ford. Um, so what we're going to do is put the sump back on. Now we bought these gaskets from TP UK. I like Transit Parts UK. They've never done us any harm, um, and they do actually supply you with with a full gasket, a proper gasket for the sump, not a big tube of silicon sump gasket. So um, we've obviously cleaned any detritus. Not that there really was any, but made sure that the um, the sump strainer pickup is dead clean. Done that ages ago, um, and we have cleaned all of the rubbish and nastiness off the inside of the sump, including the remnants of all the old cack that was stuck or stuck on it, silicon wise. So basically that on there, we'll go and find the necessary bolts wherever I put them and then quickly whip the sump on and then we're to the state where we can actually take this off an engine stand, sit it on a little bench and then I can put the flywheel on, put the timing chain on. off of the stand um, obviously heads on all the other bits are on so things we've got to attend to do actually time it up and put the timing chains back on um, you need the flywheel on to allow you to lock the um oh, lock the timing in as you can see just here is the flywheel on the locking mark it goes through to oh, there's a slot for it to lock into around this somewhere we'll do that in a minute so basically the rebuild kit comes with a new rear seal so we're going to quickly chuck that on chuck the rear seal on throw the flywheel back on obviously we'll have to um lock tight all these bolts get that clamped on the back of it and then we'll uh, bring you over here and we'll put show you how to put a timing chain on Seal 
flywheel back on. Timing mark wise, I find the best way, obviously make sure you get it in the middle, is a little 3 8 drive stubby, and then you take the, uh, the crank centre out to the mark, drop it through, and you've got one particular tooth on the, on the flywheel, the back of the reel on the flywheel is different to all the others. So that's the flywheel timed up. What I do now is go this end, and then show you how to time chains. So timing mark wise on the front, it's fairly simple. So you've got two slotted ho two holes in here, slotted holes. So make sure your three bolts bolt in your sprocket for the end of your camshaft are loose because you need a degree of float in there. Obviously when you put this chain on, things go round. Tensioner is this side. You needed to take the slack up. So I'm sitting about in the middle. Then drill bit through, through the slotted hole. There's a locked hole behind it into the head, locks that cam and that cam. And then, basically, you're going to have to pop these sprockets back off in a minute. But if you look on this chain, you have master link there and the master link there meet to these arrows. So we'll go back on time lots a minute, throw this on, and then we'll come back and put the tension on. Right, so we are run. All of the time up. I've just quickly whipped the crank pulley back on a minute, and what we want to make sure is that this thing does revolutions without locking up. Obviously, we won't have any compression because we've got no injectors in. Um, we'll make sure everything runs smoothly, and then let me come back on our marks, and we'll check it all. But it's a fairly simple process. I've got all the valves leaving up and over the top here. Right, we'll call that a bit of success. Five on time lapse. I'm going to strip all this off, take this crank pulley back off, clean the front cover up so it's um, because we've got a gasket now rather than some nasty silicon. Um, rocker cover needs to go back on. <coughs> so we need rocker cover gasket for that, and then basically after that, we're pretty much to tend into the rest of the auxiliaries. Um, the EGR cleaning, which is over here, throttle bodies, and all the general stuff to go back on. And then we've got a wiring harness to chuck on deep joy. <laughs> So this kit comes a new, so we've seen the front plate, the engine is a little bit twisted, and I think a bit of is there an arse to get off when they're stuck on. So front crank seal, um, dead easy. These basically they are literally clocked in, so drop it in, turn it clockwise um, to obviously get it back out again. You just tap on it gent gently, and it will unlock. So when you get your new one, it's got a little back section in the middle to allow you to pop it on. Um, so you don't push that out, and um, I've got to do that on there, and then basically just lock it in. We'll just give it a little bit of a beating on it to make sure it's good. The face is cleaned on the back, just make sure. Now there are some gaskets that you need to change on the back here. So your engine kit comes with... Dum, 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 dum. Need one of these. Uh, there's on the back of there. Basically, one piece. That's that. That sits there. And then um, we've got a huge, great cork ring gasket to replace the Mankey Ford based silicon. So I'll get slapping all this on. Um, and then that'll seal the front up nicely. And once we've done that, um, we can get attending to the rocker cover stick that on and then um, and then basically we're on to engine wiring wire, wire, wire. right yeah. tiny smidge of silicon purely just as a glue to hold that seal in place at the time same on the back of here a little smidge just to make sure this gasket is stuck to this so we can put it on and then it's pretty simple from here on we've got that piece to line up on the bottom there for the, get the seal on nice and easy basically push and then that pops over there, like so, and we're on. Now you've got one random longer bolt. Here goes there, 
and then the rest of it is fairly self-explanatory. Flat out the way, stay on there, Mr. Maxinger, thank you. It's just a matter of whipping through here and sticking all these back on. As you will see, rocker cover back on. Luckily enough, I've got another transit engine over here and over there for reference, because trying to remember where all these studs went was a bit of a nightmare. Um, front cover is back on, fan pulley is back on, idler is back on, water pump hose back on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go for the fuel rail, throttle body, EGR cooler, do this um, vacuum pump up. Still waiting on the injectors, so I'll have to leave that bit for a minute. Start throwing all the big book bits, water pumps just over there. So basically, we're going to do a load of time lapse in there. There's not much of a point in explaining how to take this on and off because it's fairly simple. Right, I want to drink my coffee, smoke my fag, and then we're back on it. <laughs> the injection people, one rebuilt, reassembled, ready to chuck in, transfer engine. Um, obviously the power steering pump is still on the vehicle when it's one of the all floppy and I have got the fan to go chuck on the front but I might do that once we put it back in. Um, so all I've got to do now is get the transit round here, clean it off because it's a bit gooey under the front and then wheel it in here and we'll get throwing this back in. rail pressure sensor so that it doesn't start because what I want to do is crank it and basically get some oil prime so get some oil around everything um, we've already had we cranked it with the oil filter off off camera um, got only the last to gouge out the system that we didn't like clean oil through um, so hopefully it might work it's grinding in the background again oh I'm going to need this key I'm going to Ford scan, really cheap 
sensible um, way of talking to a transit and things we don't do very many transits so what i've got to do now is go into this program and then um, because we've got a new set of injectors because you don't fit any of them um, any injectors without them um, or rebuild a transit engine without changing the uh, the laser engine destroyers um we're gonna to have to change all the codes basically the codes the calibrations for the injector so i got all the new codes saved on my phone which i'm using at the moment so i'm going to need to change all of the variants to make sure that the new codes are inputted and the old ones are gone so um, i'm going to crack on with that now and then there's a possibility after we do that it might start um i can't video it because i need my phone to do the codes right as you've seen a second ago i've coded all the injectors you know, this is Friday morning. We did uh, crank it over with the rail pressure sensor off to death and then decided perhaps it might be sensible to um, to put the plastic front around on, stop the radiator flapping around and flying into anything that was going round and round. So technically it's assembled. It's got oil pressure, we know that. It's got fuel rail pressure, we know that. It's holding coolant, so there's a fair chance that this should crack off, not do a transit and it's all over the floor down there and behave itself so be nice horrible ford thing and we'll see what happens Ooh. oh i got worried fuel pump noises <laughs> right well, apart from an engine check light on that's a pretty standard spec sounds all right isn't it And the lights came on. Right, well that appears to be working. I'm not going to rev it. I'm going to let it sort of tick over, run in, do that sort of keep an eye. Doesn't appear to be leaking anything, which is good. That actually sounds really rather sweet. Right, now, 60 diesels. There are one rebuilt Mark 8 Transit via an engine management light and a few bits of plastic. I haven't got around to putting on the bottom yet, but you don't want to see that. That's boring as hell. Thank you very much.